Do you know what the most common type of cyclist in the world looks like? Well, I do. It's a man. He is between 20 and 50 years old. He rides a commuter style bike. He does not wear a helmet and he wears a backpack to carry his stuff rather than using bags attached to his bike. How do I know this? Because I've got the data from all of you. Hey everybody, I'm Tom and this is Shifter, a channel about urban cycling, bike commuting, and the ways we get around our cities. If you like this video, please consider subscribing. And I'm really excited about today's video. I've been nerding out on data for weeks and I'm finally getting to share it with you. This all started a few months ago when I was approaching that magic number of subscribers, which I've now hit 100,000, which is really amazing. Thanks to all of you. And I wanted to mark the occasion in some way. And I thought, well, what better way to mark it than to celebrate the community that has built up around this channel in the last couple of years. So I started thinking about how we could all come together to collectively better understand urban cycling in this world that we live in. And today you're going to see the results of that, which is the first ever Shifter Global Bike Culture Index. So a few months ago, I asked all of you to help. I asked you to go to the busiest bike intersection in your neighborhood and set up a camera for about 20 minutes and just record what you see and then tally up the culture of the cyclists that you see there. I wasn't sure if this was going to work. I mean, that's a big ask to like ask all of you to like take 20 minutes out of your day to stand on a street corner and risk getting beat up by people weirded out by someone with a camera and then tallying it all up and set it in. But I'm so happy to report the results. We have more than 100 cities represented in this, which is amazing. Uh, all continents except Africa, um, which is also amazing. So this is like a truly global index, which just blew me away. I'm so excited about this. And today we're going to look at all of that data. And I should say before we start, this is not scientifically rigorous data. At best, I'd say it's science-y. So although it's tempting to like take this data as gospel, it's not, it's more just like a fun exercise to see where we're at as a, as a global community. Also, there are prizes from our, my amazing uh, bag and pannier sponsor, Two Wheel Gear, we, but more about that later. All right, let's not, that's enough talking, let's dive in. So there are a million ways to slice and dice this data, but one thing I wanted to do was to come up with like, like an easy way of determining what the culture of each city is. So I created a little icon for each city represented by these pictures and no comments on my artistic ability. Here's a couple of examples. In New York City, for example, the most common type of bike was an e-bike. It was most commonly ridden by a man aged 20 to 50. It most commonly had a backpack on and it most commonly was not wearing a helmet. So that's what New York looks like. And here's what Bratislava looks like. It was a uh, mountain bike ridden by a man aged 20 to 50 wearing a helmet and a backpack. So each city has its own sort of unique identity and I created a little icon for each one and I put all of this and the data onto a map which is linked down below. Why? Because I love maps. I'm sort of a nerd that way. Also, it's kind of cool to see what each city, how each city differs. Plus, wherever possible, I'm going to try to use the video that many of you provided. It's amazing to me that you took the time to upload these. And I think it's really helpful to see these places in real life that can just seem like abstract points on a map. So I'm so grateful to all of you who took the time to upload that video and share. Thank you so much to all of you who did that. Let's start globally and then we'll drill down to more detailed city analysis. But first off is that guy I mentioned at the beginning of the video, in averaging out all the data, this is the most common type of cyclist in the world according to this data. It's a man between 20 and 50 years old riding a commuter style bike, not wearing a helmet, wearing a backpack to carry their stuff, right? Interesting, is that what you expected? I didn't know what to expect. All right, now we're gonna dive into bike specific data. And the question here is, do people in different parts of the world ride different kinds of bikes? And after looking at the data, the answer is yes, but not in the way that I expected. Here's the most popular type of bike on each continent. So in Asia, it was casual bikes. In the Middle East, commuter bikes. In South America, mountain bikes. In Oceania, which basically means Australia and New Zealand, road bikes. In North America, commuter bikes. And then in Europe, mountain bikes. So what's going on here? All right, let's start talking about Europe because I was surprised that mountain bikes were so high on this list. And what happened was that Russia, Croatia, Bulgaria, and Lithuania were the top mountain bike countries. And so that kind of skewered the overall European results towards mountain bikes. 
Over in Western Europe, if you look at the Western European countries, which are known for cycling, like the Netherlands, Denmark, France, and Germany, they had the fewest number of mountain bikes, which kind of fits. But because of the nature of this data, it did sort of skew towards the mountain bikes. And this kind of makes sense in Western Europe. That's where the great bike cities of the world are. The cities with the best bike infrastructure, you know, in the Netherlands, Copenhagen, Amsterdam, Utrecht, all those amazing places. And in Eastern Europe, what you get is people riding, but there's not as many bike lanes. Maybe the roads aren't maintained as well. And so people are choosing mountain bikes to get them where they need to go. In North America was a bit of a surprise. I kind of expected athletic bikes, but what was most popular here were commuter style bikes, which when you think about it makes sense. I think when people ride here, it's in North America, I'm in Canada. In North America, people who ride bikes are considered commuters or bike commuters a thing. It's not like an it's not as commonly used as an everyday activity like going to the store or going to the pub. It's more like commuting on your to work. And so that kind of makes sense. Uh, Asia, tons of casual bikes here, like upright everyday bikes. Like that's amazing. Great work, Asia. I was surprised by South America, but a few people pointed out to me that outside of cities like Bogota and Colombia, there's not much, there's not much bike infrastructure in a lot of cities and the roads here can be pretty rough. So yeah, that sort of fits with them as well. And then Oceania, Australia, New Zealand, road bikes. What's the deal, Oceania? You guys just need to go fast? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, let's look at the world leaders when it comes to specifics for mountain bikes. The third most popular place for mountain bikes is Tbilisi in Georgia. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Number two is Rotorua, New Zealand. Probably pronouncing that wrong also. And the number one mountain bike city, according to the Shifter Global Bike Culture Index, Inopolis, Russia. What? Yeah, I never heard of this place either. I looked into it and it's a pretty interesting place. It's just a few hundred people founded in 2012. Basically, it's a tech town. It's like adjacent to a technical university. So not your typical city, clearly, but apparently people here love their mountain bikes. So take that as you will. Also, I couldn't help but notice these robot droid things on the pathway. So I emailed the guy who contributed and Vasil kindly told me that these are delivery robots. Yep, this is definitely a tech town. Okay, the biggest cities for commuter bikes in third place at 78% of cyclists on commuter style bikes, Fort Collins, Colorado. Second place at 83%, St. Catharines, Ontario. And the number one place where most people are riding commuter bikes, a massive 87% are on commuter bikes, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Which is interesting, it's a university town, about 125,000 people. And it's in Michigan, so I guess it's, you know, it gets cold, so commuter bikes are probably a pretty good option here in Michigan. All right, casual bikes or upright bikes or city bikes or Dutch bikes. Number three on this list, Cambridge, UK. Again, a university city, so it's easy to get around, so a casual bike makes a lot of sense. Arad, Romania. This was a surprise to me, number two uh, for casual bikes. And the number one with 86% of cyclists riding uh, casual city style bikes. Tokyo. Wow. Interesting, hey? I mean, I often call these kind of bikes uh, Dutch bikes, but a couple of people over the years have pointed out to me that, no, these are called Japanese bikes. And now we know why. Tons of Japanese uh, cyclists are riding these casual everyday bikes. Interesting. Okay. Road bikes in third place with 66% of cyclists riding road bikes. Kent, USA. In second place at 67%, Dallas, Texas. And the number one place where proportionately the most people are riding road bikes, Melbourne, Australia. Yeah, I, you Aussies and Kiwis, you like to go fast, I guess. Interesting, hey? Okay, e-bikes. Now, this one was a bit of a surprise to me. At 50% of cyclists on e-bikes, in third place was Spokane, Washington. Not what I expected. Tied for second place at 60% of cyclists on e-bikes is both New York and Paris. Interesting, right? I think that makes sense there. Not only do are there lots of city bikes, like uh, bike share bikes with, that are electric now, lots of deliveries happening on e-bikes as well. But number one, number one e-bike city in the world, according to this, Bathurst. 100% of people were riding e-bikes in Bathurst, which feels like cheating because there was only one cyclist recorded. So take that as you will. Okay, bike share bikes, you know these. These are the bike rental uh, schemes that most cities have these days. Uh, I was really interested to see, to see the cities where the highest proportion of people are on these bike share bikes. Number three is the Luxembourg, Luxembourg at 31%, which is interesting. Um, Porto Alegre, Brazil, also up there at 32%. That's the second highest. And the number one highest proportion of bike share bikes is Paris, 
36% of people on bike share bikes. So interesting. I think the idea of bike share like started way back in the 70s in Paris. So maybe uh, it hasn't been consistently adopted in that city since that time, but it seems to be working right now. Interesting, right? Okay, now we're getting into what you could maybe call the, uh, the niche bikes, the esoteric bikes. So cargo bikes, uh, the number three city in the world where 13% of people were riding cargo bikes is Sydney, Australia which doesn't quite jibe with the speed demon mentality from earlier, but interesting. Uh, number two is Murray, Utah, where 15% of people are on cargo bikes. And number one was a surprise to me, Edmonton, Canada, which is not far from here. I just did a video in Edmonton where I was surprised about what's happening there for cycling. So maybe I should stop being surprised by Edmonton. Anyway, 25% of the bikes reported for this in Edmonton were cargo bikes, which is kind of amazing. Okay, folding bikes. Uh, this one's interesting too. So number three at 8% of bikes were, was Manchester, which having been to the UK and seeing all the Bromptons being ridden everywhere, that kind of makes sense. Number two, Buenos Aires, Argentina, 10% of people on folding bikes. And number one, Kyoto, Japan. Yeah, 35% of people on folding bikes. And as I'm starting to understand folding bikes more, this makes more sense in those cities that are really busy and where space is at a premium, folding bikes just makes so much sense. So this kind of jibes. All right, so what do, we, what do we learn from all this? Well, a couple of my assumptions were challenged, that's for sure. Um, I thought the more people on bikes, the more casual bikes you'd have because a, a culture of safety and where cycling is normalized would lead to more casual bikes. But there actually was a pretty healthy diversity of cycling across lots of cities. And so that wasn't exactly what I expected, but there, you can definitely see like the more, the cities with the more cyclists, the less sporty the bikes get. So you, start, you end up seeing more folding bikes, more casual bikes, and probably more e-bikes as well, which kind of fits. It kind of fits. I think the easier it is to ride, the less you need like a, a, a sporty, uh, bike that's going to get you somewhere quickly. Uh, across all those cities, about 10% were e-bikes, which is interesting. You know, we, it's a real, there's been a real explosion of e-bikes the last few years, so we're seeing that reflected in these numbers as well. Interesting to see how uh, the bigger the bigger the city, uh, the more p people were using bike share bikes as well. So I think that goes along with like that folding bike idea, where if you're short on space, you can use a folding bike. Well, if you're short on space and your city has done a good job adopting a bike share program, you're going to see more people using bike shares. Clothing. All right, we are going to talk about clothing now. And the question here is, do people dress differently when riding a bike in different places in the world? And my assumption on this one was that, yes, I think as places would get more bike friendly, if you get more bike lanes, you'd have more and more people wearing everyday clothes and not sporty clothes. But that was not correct. Actually, according to this data, most people in most places do not wear athletic clothing. They just wear their everyday clothing, which was a bit of a surprise to me because here in North America, I see so many people riding athletically. Um, so interesting. Um, yeah, every continent had a majority of people in everyday clothes. Asia and Europe had huge numbers of people in everyday clothing, 87 and 80% respectively, which I kind of expected. But to see North America so high in everyday clothing was a bit of a surprise. That was at 60%. So let's look at the countries now. So the countries with the most people wearing everyday clothes, number three at 95% of people was Denmark which is maybe not a surprise. There's amazing bike lanes to get around there. Biking has totally been normalized and people just use a bike to get around. Number two was the Netherlands at 96%, also not a surprise. But you know what beat those two? This was a, maybe a surprise to me. At 98% of people wearing regular clothes, Japan. Yeah, so three great bike countries and that's reflected in the clothing that people wear, I guess. Okay, now let's look at the individual cities. And there were a handful of cities where 100% of people were wearing everyday clothes. Uh, Spokane, Washington, Vaughan, Ontario, Fort Saskatchewan, Canada, Ann Arbor, Michigan, but these had really small numbers of cyclists, only a couple. And so interesting, but maybe not the most reflective, but of the cities with a significant number of cyclists, here are the three that had the most highest number of people in everyday clothes. Number three, Toulouse, France, number two, Tokyo, and number one, Kyoto. So those Japanese cities really coming out on top where you just ride your, ride your clothes and get on your bike, you know? Okay, let's look at athletic clothing, the places where most people are wearing athletic clothing. And the number three on this list at 58% of people wearing athletic clothing was Toledo, Ohio. Uh, number two at 60% is uh, Greenville, South Carolina. Greenville is uh, known as a great mountain bike destination, so I think that might help explain. You know, there might be a culture of mountain biking around there. And number one was Melbourne, Australia at 68%. Again, lots of athletic cycling going on down there in Australia. And I also asked about racing kits. So like one step above athletic clothing is like 
fully cycling racing clothing like we're talking about lycra here not just you know shorts and number three is snohomish washington i hope i'm saying that right uh, that was 42%. Number two is Dallas, Texas at 50% of people wearing their racing kit. And number one was Ottawa, Canada, also at 50%. So I guess number one and two are tied. Um, what does this say? Um, I, I, I'm guessing that maybe it means there's really long distances for people to commute on their bikes. And so they really need to gear up and be athletic to cover those distances. Uh, or maybe it's just the culture. Maybe it's just the quirk of the day when the data was recorded. I don't know what to make of this. <laughs> All right, let's move on to helmets. And the question here was, do people in different places wear helmets at different rates? And I guess my assumptions coming into this were that like North Americans are obsessed with helmets and nobody else is. But again, not correct. So worldwide, only 40% of people reported wearing helmets, were recorded wearing helmets. So that's really interesting to me. Um, and when you break it down, the numbers, it's quite different. So here's how it broke down in Oceania, so Australia and New Zealand. Basically 100% of people are wearing helmets and I am assuming that's because there are laws there that require helmets to be worn. So that would explain that one. North America helmet wearers are also in the majority and I think that's because some places there are laws but they're, they're, it's not the most places but I would think that there is a real culture of helmets around here um, and also you know, 40 years of how nagging and uh, treating cycling as a sport rather than an everyday transportation option leads to that helmet use. So that explains why it's quite a bit higher there. Um, Asians are not wearing helmets almost at all, most, mostly in Japan. So let's break this down by country. The most helmet wearing countries, uh, uh, are number three were Canada, where I live at 72% of people wearing helmets. Uh, number two is Chechia at 78%. So that's interesting. Uh, maybe they're also a culture of sport or maybe people are not feeling safe riding within traffic and so they wear more helmets. And number one, of course, Australia and New Zealand, basically 100% of people are wearing helmets there. Uh, as for the countries with the most people not wearing helmets, right at the bottom is Japan, which I mentioned earlier, but also low are the Eastern European countries. So lots of people are riding mountain bikes but not wearing helmets in those Eastern European countries, which I don't know what's going on. Is there a different way of assessing risk in cultures? Do people, uh, that just hasn't caught on? Is it a financial thing? People don't want to spend money on helmets. I don't know, if you're in Eastern Europe, let me know your thoughts. Okay, let's look at the breakdown of helmets by city. So we've got a bunch of Australian, Canadian, and American cities where the number of people wearing helmets was 100%. But they also tended to not have that many cyclists reported. So coincidence, correlation, or causation? I don't really know. But at the bottom, we have all those Eastern European countries or cities, um, and also South American cities. Um, among the lowest North American cities for helmet use were New York and San Diego which is interesting. I think New York has a pretty good culture of cycling, so maybe things are a bit safer there because there are more uh, bike lanes, or at least the perception is more safe, so people aren't wearing them there. San Diego, yeah, I don't know, interesting. Is it that balmy, perfect Southern California weather? People don't want to mess up their hair? I don't know what's going on there. Uh, also at the bottom are, is Paris. Only 24% of people were wearing helmets. Um, what's going on there? I don't know. Do they want to look good? Because everyone seems to look good in Paris. Uh, maybe. Or maybe the, all that work they've done the last few years to really transform the city into more bike-friendly locations with all those bike lanes. Maybe it's r resulting in people feeling more safe. I don't know. Interesting. So I asked all of you tallying these, these information up to supply things like gender and age. But sometimes it's hard to tell someone's age. And also, um, my categories were maybe too broad. So basically, when it comes to age, everybody is between 20 and 50. <laughs> the vast majority in every location was people between 20 and 50. Um, so it wasn't that interesting or useful. So I'm not going to get too deep into that. But gender was more interesting. Um, there are, in most places, the vast majority, it was mostly men riding. Um, but there were a few interesting places where women were in the majority, which is interesting. I sort of think of women as the indicator species of safe cycling. If a city is safe for getting around on a bike, you tend to see more women riding there. So that's interesting. But here are the only cities that measured more than 50% women. And they are, and there's five of them. And they, in order, number five was Vaughan, Ontario, which was a surprise to me. 50% women there. Number four is Athurst, Denmark at 53%. So yeah, if you go to Denmark, you see all... Uh, a real gender balance there because it is so safe and easy to ride. Uh, Bows in Italy at 54%, Tokyo at 55%, and then the top two were Helsinki at 60%. Amazing, I know Helsinki's made great strides in cycling the last few years, uh, so to see that many women is uh, very promising. 
and then uh, Papendrecht in the Netherlands at 65%. So that's a pretty big majority of women riding. Uh, it's interesting that all, almost all the cities where women were in the majority are really great for cycling. Like they have great bike infrastructure. So I don't think that's a coincidence. Like cycling has been normalized and people feel safe and therefore women tend to do it more often. Just a couple of other points on demographics. Like I said, most of the demographic info came back around age, as people between 20 and 50. But I'll just mention the cities with the most number of older people were Arad, Romania, and Sofia, Bulgaria, uh, and the cities with lots of children, Dierkirch, Luxembourg, Sofia, Bulgaria, and Fort Collins, Colorado. So again, these numbers are all pretty low, so I wouldn't read too much into them, but interesting nonetheless. All right, are you numbered out? That was a lot of numbers, wasn't it? Well, I find this stuff super fascinating. I hope you do too. Um, and I just wanted to end with a couple of, of my own thoughts, some of the things that surprised me throughout all of this. And maybe the first thing that struck me was the diversity across the world and in individual cities. There's, you, you just can't really say that a city has a certain culture of cycling based on this. Um, people are riding different types of bikes, they're wearing different types of clothing, they, they, they make their own personal decisions, I think, wherever they are, which I think is interesting. Yeah, there are definitely trends in different places, but I think uh, the way you ride your bike is a, seems to be an intensely personal thing, and so people make these choices based on their own situations. Uh, some outstanding questions. Australia and New Zealand and your helmets, your 100% compliance with your helmet bylaw. Um, these countries also ranked very highly in racing bikes, sporty racing bikes and athletic gear or road bikes, I mean. And it makes me wonder if by requiring people to wear helmets, if it influences the way that people ride their bike as well. Um, but when you put a helmet on, it almost just automatically feels like you're competing in a sport. And does that influence the way people think about cycling? I don't know. Um, there's lots of uh, questions about helmet use and I've got a whole video on this. I'm not gonna get into that right now. But the question I'm wondering what left is, it, it, does that helmet law change the way people ride? I don't know. Japan, I mean, we almost, when we think of like urban cycling, we think of cities in the Netherlands and Denmark as being like the, the global standards. But Japan topped out almost all of those categories for, you know, casual bikes and no helmets, all those things you think about as being like normalized cycling. Um, and I'm wondering, like, are, is Japan out Netherlandsing the Netherlands? I don't know. If you live in Japan, let me know. What's the bike culture there? Well, how do you account for all this stuff? Why is it so easy for so many people to ride bikes in a casual way in Japan? Let me know. Also, I got to get there and check this out myself. Okay, Eastern Europe. Also, what an interesting mix. What is going on here? All those mountain bikes, none of those helmets, all that casual wear. Hmm. Uh, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure I understand what's going on in Eastern Europe, but if you've got some insight, also share that one as well. Okay, prizes. So everyone who submitted was put into a hat and we drew a name randomly for a thousand dollars worth of bags and panniers from my amazing uh, sponsor, Two Wheel Gear. And the winner is Jeremy from Murray, Utah. So congratulations, Jeremy. I uh, hope that this, these bags and panniers make your bike life a little bit easier and you'll be able to haul all kinds of stuff. They make great bags at Two Wheel Gear. So yeah, that's it. I think we could spend hours crunching this data and maybe we want to. I don't know if you want to do more of this, let me know in the comments. Um, I've got the data up uh, for you to download as well. I've tried to anonymize it as much as possible. Uh, so if you want to crunch numbers in new ways, please go at it. Um, also, the map is there so you can sort of uh, peruse that at your leisure. Um, but if you just do something with the data, make sure you share it back. Uh, everyone wants to see what's going on here. I'm sure there are people out there who are much smarter with data than I am. So I'm really excited to see if anyone does anything cool with this. Uh, and also just once again, a huge thank you to all of you who participated. I know this took a lot of time and investment. So I honestly had no idea if this was going to work or not, but the fact that we got a hundred cities from all over the world just kind of blew me away. So thank you. The shifter community is amazing. Uh, so thanks to everyone for submitting and thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next time.